Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. I wanted to share with you guys my backyard hitting station. I have used this a lot and I've actually found it to be really beneficial if you're if you're somebody who's looking to stay sharp with your game. One of the best things that you can do is to be practicing consistently and sometimes that's not very realistic for people you know to get to the course it might be a drive and you know it takes a certain amount of time which you may not have uh, so for me the convenience of having this in my backyard right I can access this anytime 24 7 you know so if I if it's 6 30 in the morning is the convenient time for me to come out and practice for half an hour I can do that or on the flip side, if, you know, 10 o'clock at night after the sun goes down, you know, I can bring out a spotlight and get a little practice in for half an hour. Also, the timings are important, right? The ability to come out and do this for 15 minutes over my lunch break or, you know, like I said, 30 minutes at the end of the night or before work, you know, that's really, I think, important, you know, to be able to practice consistently uh, for short, focused, but burst periods of time is really great. And especially if you're working on a swing change, I find that something like this is really nice. Uh, having a hitting net like this lets you focus on the movement of your body rather than the outcome of where the golf ball is going. And, uh, and then the, the outcome will come once you groove that better movement pattern. So what I wanted to do is walk you through kind of the important bits of it and what I all did and, and hopefully you can learn from this. Uh, I would say as a starting point this is probably one of the more inexpensive setups that one could per possibly have and so um, that was my goal this isn't supposed to be fancy but uh, it is inexpensive and it is functional and I've hit probably hundreds if not thousands of balls into this thing over the last two years so it's been very reliable um, and all links of the products that I have will be down below in the description so let's go ahead and take a closer look all right first up let's talk about the mat this is a five foot by five foot mat. I bought it off eBay. I believe that this is, came to me as like maybe a second hand one that or was maybe previously used at a driving range. Uh, I would say though that it has been perfectly functional for me. It's been very resilient and reliable. Uh, it is a mat so it doesn't give you kind of rough or even kind of fairway like conditions because it does bounce a little but overall it's been really good. I have it on top of dirt so I basically just um, took a shovel and I s kind of scooped out the, the layer of, of top grass and and kind of laid a flat bit of dirt that I put this on top of and it has been perfectly perfectly fine and staying nice and level for my purposes. Um, you know, it does have access for rubber tees, which is, is okay. I, I do hit drivers on this from time to time, but my focus is really with shorter clubs for grooving my swing. But overall, I would say this mat has been great. Uh, I have used this mat indoors in the winter in my basement on a cement floor. I did not experience any injuries. Uh, you know, kind of repetitively banging into something that's on top of, of concrete is probably not a great idea or cement but I haven't experienced any injuries and that's mostly just because I'm not you know hitting high speed shots I'm mostly focusing on movement patterns and just wanted to contact a golf ball so you know for the price I think this is about as cheap as it gets uh, the last thing I will say is I love that it's a 5x5 five five, meaning I can stand on it you know if I stand uh, over here the balls over here so it's all on the same level right whereas some of the mats that you can find the ball is is not on the same place that you stand on and I've, I've always found that to be kind of weird um, I like having to be able to stand on the same deal uh, there is a little bit of rubber underneath but you know overall that it, it is very stable it's it's somewhat heavy and it's it's very stable for my purposes I, it doesn't really move when I hit it so overall for my purpose right this is something that sits outside uh, all summer long, all spring, f summer, fall, and I do bring it indoors during the winter, but for those months, it's sitting outside, it's been durable, and it's been highly functional. So I, I give it a great review for my purpose. Okay, next up I wanted to talk about the framing that I've got here. As you can see, this is like a metal gardening post that I have planted deep into the ground, and I've got one on each side, and that kind of serves as the anchor that really holds this into the ground. And then attached to it, I have some half inch PVC piping that I got from my local hardware store. And I just use these zip ties to combine the two together. And um, I had to get a little creative so that we've got a right angle up here. And as you can see, I actually 
have kind of tied it. I actually drilled a hole right in here and then I've tied it so that the, the zip tie actually basically holds itself together. So there's no glue or anything in here holding the joints together. It's just the, it's just the zip tie really. Uh, but the zip ties have been fine. I find that they sag a little bit here in the middle and you can see that in the middle here actually some of my zip ties have broken off. But you know these have been up for like a year, a year and a half. And so I actually think that's somewhat understandable. Um, you know they do suffer a lot of abuse. I have been thinking about finding a way to kind of bolster this in the middle but you know, really up until now, I really haven't had a problem. Like I said, I have hit drivers into this thing, and it, there hasn't been any concerns in terms of uh, durability or, or it standing up to that kind of abuse. So um, overall, you know, I, maybe I think if you would do like three-quarter inch PVC, maybe that would be preferable and it would sag less. But um, like I said, for my purposes, it's been just fine. And then lastly, let's just talk about this netting. Um, I'll leave a description down in the below. I think I paid $50 for this netting. I think it's 10 by 10 approximately. And um, overall, it's been quite excellent. I haven't had any golf balls break through the netting and fly. You know, obviously that would be a problem. My house is straight ahead. Uh, my car is over there. You know, that could be a big problem if you hit a driver and you just pound right through the netting. Uh, so I've, I've had a great experience with this netting. I uh, haven't had any balls power through it. Uh, then I've got my little bucket here full of golf balls. I just use, I think I bought a bunch of old range balls and, and really cheap uh, used, you know, undesirable golf balls that I hit. And every once in a while I throw them in the dishwasher to clean them off, but overall they, they really do just fine. Um, and then really the last thing I would recommend is you want to have space. You can see I've got a little sawhorse over there that I use to hold the tripod for my camera so that I can take a video of my swing. But, you know, that's really it in terms of my little hitting station. And uh, I would really encourage you guys, if you're interested in something like this, to go ahead and build one yourself. Uh, not a lot of investment here. I think, you know, it was, I don't know if it was 150 or 200 bucks for the mat. Uh, the netting was another 50 and then all the other miscellaneous stuff was, you know, probably less than $50 all combined. So you know, just a couple hundred bucks of investment, and I have this nice hitting area, which I really have enjoyed a lot of benefit. So uh, let me know your guys' thoughts and comments down below, and uh, I'd love to see what you guys have got for home hitting stations. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Bye.